Hi, I'm Danger Dan Jers, the host and GM of the D&D Real Play podcast, d and Dark. Join us on Wednesdays for an absurd, over-the-top comedy horror adventure starring some of history's most infamous monsters. I'm Ben Magnet. I play Mary Frankenstein, our barbarian. I am Daniel Cruz. I am playing Imhotep the Mummy, our cleric. I'm Jordan, and I play Larry Talbot, a lycanthropic warlock. I am Grayson, playing Jack Griffin, the Invisible Man, the party's rogue. I am Aaron. I play the Phantom of the Opera, our bard. For more information, go to dndarkpodcast.com and listen to us anywhere you find podcasts. Hey, everybody, it's your boy Davis over at CFG Games, and I'd like to welcome you to a special Pop Culture Gems. Spider-Man 2 is literally one day away, and I had the opportunity to talk to one of the most awesome voice actors that were a part of this project. I had the chance to speak to Stephen O. Young, the voice of Mr. Negative in the original Marvel Spider-Man, but he's also is returning his role as Martin Lee in Spider-Man 2. And uh, we had an, a special interview and uh, and, sh- and I really had the pleasure to talk to him. Unfortunately, I, we had some issues that day when we were doing some of the recording so it was a uh, fun fun experience so the set the the quality is not as good as what we normally do it but i just wanted to let you know it's still a great interview you should definitely check his stuff out play the game Sp- marvel spider-man 2 it is freaking awesome and as always if you do us a favor and check us out on any podcast services that are currently out there we're on all services give us a like or, or favorite there or stay tuned on our main website confreak and geeks.com to not miss an episode anyways enjoy the interview Hey everybody, I would like to welcome you to another episode of Pop Culture Gems. This is a series where we talk to amazing creators, artists, cosplayers, voice actors, and so much more. If you like the interviews we do with our terrific guests, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the CFG channel. We also release pop pop culture gems on all podcast services, uh, like on our main website, confreaksgeeks.com. So check that out to not miss an episode. I am Davis Green, and today... I am speaking to an incredible actor who is killing it in the video game world. He is an actor, stuntman, mocap actor, martial artist, voice actor, and so much more. I don't even know how many, how many things I could just list on all the awesomeness that you can do. <laughs> so, uh, But he's played favorite comic book characters like the Red Hood in Gotham Knights, Mr. Negative in Marvel Spider-Man, and he's actually reprising his role as Martin Lee, a.k.a. Mr. Negative in Marvel Spider-Man 2, the game that's coming out next, uh, that's coming out October 20th. I would like to welcome Welcome Stephen O. Young to the show. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, that's a lot of hyphens, right? <laughs> Stuntman, actor, <laughs> mocap, B.O. Yeah, man, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Man, I mean, hey, <laughs> I know there's one thing though. You're you're not staying staying idly by. You're you're just you're just going all. You're you're just you're just killing it, man. Oh no, you know that's that's a you know I'm an actor, so I like to act. Yeah, man, I'll, I'll never say no to work. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. All right. Well, let's get it. Let's get into this. Um, so uh, like uh, so I'm just wanting to know, I mean, like you're 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 basically your starting story of all of this. Like what made you want to become like an actor? Oh, man. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I guess I, I always had a big imagination growing up and I was always a class clown. And, uh, yeah, you know, there came a point where I was learning martial arts very heavily during college. And uh, I always wanted to be a comic book artist, Uh, but, you know, the deadlines and frankly, just being amazing at art, like that's what was required. I wasn't able to do that. I was all right. I wasn't able to do that, but I did fall in love with martial arts during college. And uh, around that time, that was when The Matrix came out. So that really inspired me. Uh, It really lit a fire under me. And I thought for sure I was either going to, you know, open up a martial arts school 
or I was going to go like be a politician or something, right? Like I wasn't uh, good at math like my father, who was an engineer. Uh, you know, I wasn't going to be a lawyer or a doctor. I thought, okay, well, I, I, I like to perform. You know, I was doing school plays and things like that. So either politics or open a martial arts school. And then there, you know, my father actually asked me, uh, did a little thought experiment and said, you know, what would you like to do for free? All right. And that's when I was like, yeah, I would I would probably act. Right. OK. Yeah. So long story okay. short, my dad was like uh, he was like, what would you like to do for free? And I said, yeah, you know, I would probably act. I was really scared to even think of that. You know, mm -hmm. acting is such a difficult industry to even break into, you know, and rejection is the norm. And for me, uh, especially with a delicate constitution, you know, I didn't want my ego to be heard. And, and I, I was very scared of it. But I said, yeah, you know, maybe I would I would do that. And that's when my, my dad was like, well, then you should you should just try that. You should try that. He, he, he basically was like, I'll give you 10 years. You know, if you can't get one role in 10 years, then I think it's time. You know, after that, that's when you should go get a law degree or, or go back to school, do something corporate, whatever. So. Yeah, thankfully, my love of martial arts kind of carried me through, right? I got a job at a live show called Pirates Dinner Adventure. And all the people that were working there were stunt people or people trying to get into stunts in Hollywood. And that's when I realized, like, wait a minute, you can have a career in Hollywood, in movies and television, using martial arts, right? Uh, and so I said, all right, let, let me try that. Thankfully, was able to get on the ground floor and stunts. And, you know, that whole time I was trying to be an actor, but, uh, you know, you need agents, you need to build up a resume, you need, you need education, right? You think, things of that nature. And so I really cut my teeth doing stunts, learning the industry that way. Um, wow. Yeah. And one wow. thing led to another, you know, I was doing stunts on TV shows, stunts on movies, and that got me into motion capture. So I was doing some motion capture stuff. I was I was familiar with gameplay motion capture, cinematic motion capture with Blur Studio. And then everything kind of culminated in the audition for Mr. Negative with Spider-Man. That was like the first, yeah, that was like the first role I had in video games where it, like, it was my face. It was a, he was a bad guy, but he was also very sympathetic. Up to that point, I played a lot of bad guys. But they were like one-offs or they were like the nameless, faceless henchmen on TVs or movies, right? Mm -hmm. This was the first time that I was like front and center. So it was wow. very surreal for me to, to have that happen. So I, I owe Spider-Man a lot. That is so awesome. It's actually kind of interesting because, like, you li like literally with the story from the beginning to the like, it, I, you can literally see the step to step to the step to like get to the the next level to the next level uh, uh, for that. Uh, how like how long have you been like uh, when did you start learning martial arts? Like, uh, how how old were you when you started doing martial arts? Or oh yeah, I mean, arts? I started really like heavily, heavily doing it only basically like my senior year of high school. Because my father was just like, oh, no, no, you know, wait until you're in college. You should just like, you know, you're still growing, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, but my father was a judo expert, basically, growing up. Uh, and so he taught me how to wrestle when I was younger. But it was really, I wanted to learn, like, kung fu. And when, when the Matrix came out, that's when it was like, okay, this is a sign from the heavens. I must learn this art and it turns out it was wushu yeah and uh you know when i went to college down in san diego that was also around the time where a lot of you know masters from the beijing sports institute where jet lee was from they started to come over to america they were going to the east coast a few were coming to the west coast and we had a, a few amazing coaches uh come down to yeah. san diego where i was studying and yeah i fell in love with wushu and uh, the rest is history. That's awesome. I I just imagine like the the exact part in the matrix is probably when you start doing the one handed blocking with the absolutely. <laughs> I know kung fu. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this whole thing. Yeah, all that. Yeah, all and that. and uh, I mean, and uh, you you start like uh, you said uh, you started your career like like as you said as a stuntman as well as a martial art uh, like martial arts uh, um, in several 
like films and stuff like that, uh, TV and films and things like that. But is there a film that you were in that you enjoyed, like the stunt and audio uh, of the choreography that was in it or like something specific that was like, you know, dur- during your during your career? Oh, are you talking about movies that I was in or just movies yeah, in you, general? That you, you were you know, movies that you yourself in, like or that like you were a part of that did the choreography, that, that was part of the choreography or anything like that. You know? Oh, you know, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this movie gets a, a lot of flack, but I loved the experience. And it was 47 Ronin with Keanu Reeves. I love that. That movie I mean, gave we worked... a lot of flack? No, that movie. Yeah, that, you know. That's a cool it, classic. It, you know, it's... It... <laughs> I'll put it politely, right? It wasn't necessarily (laughs) well-received by, you know, the mainstream audiences or any audience, really. But, like, I met some of, you know, some of my best friends there. I had a great time shooting in England. We worked our tails off, and it was so fun coming up with choreography and working with the Japanese team, working with the legend Hiroyuki Sonata as well. You know, not only were we choreographing, but we were also fighting you know we were we were again nameless faceless samurai but yeah i mean uh like i said i met some of my greatest friends there uh liang yang who is now a uh, big time stunt coordinator in england but he's also the dude that was uh playing john lark in mission impossible six in the bathroom fight like mm-hmm. that's my guy that's my my best friend when i first met him i hated him because he was so good <laughs> i was so jealous <laughs> You know, him and Andy Lister, uh, another British, uh, a fantastic, phenomenal wushu stunt guy. Yeah, I I love 47 Ronin. And then I have to say Equalizer 1 with Denzel Washington. That was that that right there was like the top of the top. I mean, working with Denzel, being able to train with him, being able to show him some stuff. Uh, was were you like the choreo- Did you do the car? Were you a part of the choreography of that? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, of the equalizer as well. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, and uh, yeah, that was amazing, you know, working with, with Denzel and working with Antoine Fuqua, just trying to come up with the most creative ways to take down gangsters. It was like so fun, you know. And I, <laughs> I love the city of Boston, I, I never have a bad time traveling and working, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, working with Denzel. Peak of the peak for sure. That must have been pretty fun, especially the way, like you were saying, the way that you made people, the baddies die from Denzel's hands. Yeah. Was actually, quite creative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes I have to pinch myself because I'm like, you know, we're we're a bunch of grown adults who are just sitting in a room brainstorming cool ways to do stuff. It was like, <laughs> it was the greatest job in the world. You're you know? like, okay, what's well, the final fight scene? It's like, huh, let's, let's, let's put it in the Home Depot and, uh, yeah. and just, <laughs> and, uh, and just, uh, just, just, just basically do a uh, random, like, uh, MacGyver yeah. it, MacGyver the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. That, that's great. Uh, uh, and, uh, just wondering, like, how hard was it to transition to so many, like, different aspects of, like, your acting career? I mean, you moved from stuntman to on screen and movies and TV to voice acting. I mean, like, just the just the aspect of stuntman to actor to get screen time yeah. as a face actor, I can just imagine that must have been an uphill battle because I've heard oh, for crazy sure. stories. Certainly, like, Certainly. Like how was yeah, you know, absolutely. When I thank you for even noticing that, you know that it is so true. I for sure when I first started, I thought, okay, stunts is is right there. You know, we're we're right next to the actors. I'll I'll get opportunities to act. But it turns out, at least back then, it is very. Uh, rigid you know there is hierarchical there each department has their thing and you don't cross departments it's just logistics so it turned out uh yeah doing stunts didn't necessarily correlate to being an actor so i really did have a tough time making that trend that jump and i had to like near the end of my stunt career uh you know i was doing fight choreography and i was doing uh, stunt coordinating and I thought okay you know that's great and there are amazing stunt coordinators and there are amazing fight coordinators but I want to be an actor so I have to I have to say no to certain things and that was really hard uh, you know because that's your your livelihood so I had to just take the leap and say to myself this is really what started to, to change my thought process I, you know I'm doing stunts and I'm doing fights and I love doing fights but uh, there came a point where I thought to myself, you know, if I'm not making my dream happen, I'm making other dream, other people's dreams happen, right? right. So, like, 
uh, I need to, I need to do what's best for me. So that's what happened. So yeah, I had to say no. Uh, thankfully, um, you know, I'm kind of in a niche market myself, right? I, I'm an Asian dude. I'm relatively tall. I have martial arts skills. So I could be the bad guy. And that's generally what started to happen. Like I was, I was playing the bad guy or I was doing action acting. Like if we need an actor who can do stunts, I started to do that. And then it became, you, Oh, I'm sorry. But uh, were, were yeah. you afraid of being like typecasted for like a situation like that? I mean, if you knew you could do more or anything like that, I mean, you, know, you don't want to go by the, it, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think everybody is, uh, but I, I, there was a point where, yes, for sure. I was like, well, all the same stuff. I don't want to be known as the guy who just does martial arts or I don't want to speak with an accent. That's like a big one. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I had an acting coach uh, tell me once uh, like, Hey, well, are there people like you who speak with accents? And I said, yeah. And then she said, well, don't you think they want to be represented well in, in however the character is shown? And I, I thought, yeah. And she said, well, don't, wouldn't you want to do that for them? And I said, you know what? That is true. Like, mm -hmm. let me let me take this chip off my shoulder. And and in my heart, I thought to myself, like, whatever comes my way, I'll just have to make something good out of it. Right, so right. And, and and like I said, I'm an actor. I'll I'll not say no to work generally. And I mm -hmm. thought to myself, hey, even if it's like a a role I, that is not big or or like I said, typecast. I'll try to put something different. I'll try to stand out a little bit. I'll try to make it elevate it a little bit in any way that I can. And uh, that has been helpful. Yeah. Oh, and then now there, there's things that I don't mind being typecast for. Like I love playing a soldier or a doctor or, you know what I mean? I, or, or again, the, the bad guy that has interesting motivations. I don't mind doing that at all. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Look, okay, yeah, that, yeah, I like that. Uh, and like, uh, like, do you you have a, a do you have like a favorite like comic book hero villain and uh, and why like uh, <laughs> like uh, oh, man. I yeah. Well, I mean, I have so many. Obviously, growing <laughs> up, I was a huge comic book fan. Uh, I was in the image. You know, when Image Comics first came out, that, that oh, was yeah. like I was all on board. So I was a huge Jim Lee fan. But that made me look at his work during his run during the X-Men, right? X-Men one through seven or whatever. I got all those copies, right? <laughs> but like, so I love the X-Men. Uh, mm -hmm. But as far as like standalone characters, I mean, my two, my two go-to guys truly are Batman mm -hmm. and Spider-Man. I remember growing up, my first comic book I ever had was actually a record one of these like 1970s or 80s the record yeah. yeah they had a record yeah with a vocal you know a VO performance of a reading of the comic book and it was a spider-man issue and it was the issue where spider-man is fighting j jonah jameson's son who has a pendant that is turning him into a werewolf and i just i you know look at the dog ears on that comic book i wrote on it i drew on it i obsessively read that comic book every day when I was growing up. So those, those are my two. And why I like them? Well, Spider-Man just has a great, you know, he has great powers and great mm -hmm. responsibility. Oh, see what I did there? His costume's yep. amazing. But, uh, you know, Batman, obviously, is Batman. I mean, there's no comparison to that as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I know. Everyone loves Batman and the and yeah. gallery of villains. So definitely do that. And, uh, uh, and at this point... You have played a good guy, a good comic book, uh, a good guy in the comic books, uh, yeah. and a villain in a comic book villain, um, yeah, in your voice acting career. Uh, which one would you say? And then I'm not saying like the character wise, but like just in your sure. career base itself, but like which one would you say you would enjoy you enjoyed playing more? Like, did you like playing the good guy more or the bad or the villain more? Uh, oh man, uh, through it. Well, every all the cliches are true when actors say that bad guys have more fun. Now, I, I never really thought of it because I was always playing bad guys. But yes, <laughs> when I was able to play Red Hood, I realized like, oh, there's a lot of pressure here to there's a lane you have to be in. Right. Mm -hmm. In order to be the good guy that you can't really cross over. Uh, whereas with a villain, you have so much leeway. You have so much freedom. In fact, you're you're encouraged 
to push these boundaries and get out of these safe lanes. So, yeah, I mean, bad guy every time for sure. But, you know, <laughs> um, if there came like a TV show or a movie, here, here's the great thing about being a good guy is you're mm -hmm. the good guy. That is the, that's the reward of being the good guy is you, you know, you're, you're there till the end. You're generally victorious. Who doesn't want to win? <laughs> yeah you don't have to be the one you're not gonna be the one-off episode you're gonna be yeah. the, whole, the whole shebang for right. the most part <laughs> yeah exactly so that's that's always the the reward for that <laughs> right uh like uh um uh, and uh mr negative it, like mr negative himself as a comic book like character he's fairly new he's been around like maybe in the early early 2000s or so but like uh uh Mar like uh uh and he was like your significant like your significant voice acting role who's your first role in voice acting itself like not once a first role but your biggest role in voice acting initially did you initially have like any kind of idea like how to play a character like him especially since he, this is like the very first time he's been like mentioned <laughs> like in the right in any in anything besides the comic books like did you have an idea what you were wanting to do to make him to, to make him uh, stand out oh i mean well that was the great thing about the fact that he was so new the team at Insomniac were able to kind of explore different ways to portray him. And so the iteration that you see as a final product in Spider-Man was not the first iteration. We kind of went a different direction. We kind of made him, yeah, we kind of made him less sympathetic in the beginning. And then they realized like, no, we got to, we, you know, they made the decision rightfully so, I think, to, to kind of push him to be this character that has this duality, this struggle internal struggle within him as opposed to just this one-dimensional villain with uh you know a flat motivation um and again as far as the portrayal uh brian intahar the director he really just came up to me and he just said hey just be you right because <laughs> uh i have that i have that in me right doing martial arts and, and growing up and playing these mostly bad characters in my stunt career I was very familiar with that. And then in my daily life, in my especially when I'm front facing in a professional setting, I try to be very just nicer in general. You know, I'm a joker, whatever. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a class clown type of guy. I like to put people at ease. So I think that maybe they saw a little bit of that. And and so yeah, Mr. Negative really was just a culmination of all of that together. So for me, it was very, it was very enjoyable. It wasn't, I didn't stress about it. I didn't really have to, you know, pick my own brain and, and dissect scene by scene. It was kind of just like, oh yeah, I would, I would say it like this. Or I would do this for sure. I mean, I guess it also would help with the fact that they also mo capped your face to make like you were, the, oh, you're literally the face of Mr. Absolutely. Negative. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I have to give them so much thanks for that because, you know, they could have totally, not they could have made it uh not face whatever right and uh the fact that they did yes that that truthfully was my first voiceover and face character oh wow. I, I yeah i had done a lot of motion capture but you never really saw my face and as far as voiceover i don't think i did a day of voiceover before that well, how much primarily. of a culture shock was that, was that going to be itself? I mean, like, if you're just, if it felt, that sounds like you just might have just been jumped into a situation that you oh, never no, you know, I, I had seen it so many times, again, like, because, again, working on motion capture sets, I had seen how it's done, you know, and I'm an actor, so you're just supposed to act. So I was excited. I was, and frankly, I just thought, yeah, now is the time. It's finally happened. I was so grateful. Uh, but yeah, it was obviously exciting and it was, it's, it's always a fun time doing mocap, I think. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's always kind of funny when you see a person get, without the context of what you're doing and then you just yeah. see them move like a, uh, like crazy and doing all these, this awesome stuff. So like, yeah, it looks, <laughs> it, it looks like a ton of fun though. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I always say it's like, you know, when you're on a mocap set, it's just like a bunch of kids playing in a sandbox. It is so <laughs> liberating. Yeah. Just with ping pong balls all over you. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And a camera on your face, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, and uh and uh uh you're like uh, as earlier, you are reprising your role as Mr. Mitt Negative in Marvel Spider-Man 2. Um, how would you like I mean, without I, well, uh, hopefully if you can, sure. 
yeah. how would you best describe Mr. Negative's like character wise like character wise in the sequel? Like how much has he grown or does he uh, like different kind of tricks? Like like what would be the best kind of description of where he's at uh, as a character in the in the newer in the new Spider-Man 2? Well, I will say that, you know, sometime in the game world has passed. I think it's something like six months. He's been in the rafts. And obviously, we've seen the the memes. You know, he's got the long hair. He's got the beard. He looks like Adam Driver or Keanu Reeves or Justin Long, according to whatever you, your preference is. But uh, he's definitely more world-weary. Uh, he's been beaten down, for sure, as we saw from the ending of Spider-Man 1. So when you kind of see him in this, in the beginning, he's he's... He is pretty broken, uh, but, you know, the fans will have their confrontation between Miles and Mr. Negative. Miles will, will be able to to really hash it out with uh, the man who murdered his father. So uh, oh, wow. they'll, they'll, they'll be able to see that. And then I think there are some other surprises that, that they'll be happy to explore. Oh, that's okay, all i yeah. can say about that yeah <laughs> yeah i'm trying to be very careful because <laughs> i don't know yeah. that the time the game isn't out yet <laughs> but uh, uh and uh, i mean are you normally like are you a gamer normally or like have you like tried have you played like Sp- marvel spider-man yourself in like uh oh, in- i am not i'm not gonna sit here and lie to you i am a terrible gamer but <laughs> my my two favorite games are resident evil 4 and metal gear solid snake eater oh, uh nice. yeah and, uh, and yeah, as far as the swinging, uh, like, I love the swing, I love the fight, but, uh, yeah, you don't want me on your team playing <laughs> video games because I will lose all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Well, uh, well, wait, man, uh, St- uh, Stephen o- uh, o- Young, thank you so much for stopping by. It was really awesome, like, chatting with you, talking uh, talking to you about it. Uh, uh, hopefully, I definitely can't wait till the game comes out. I'm going to mess around with it, see how it is. But uh, but thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Thank you. It was a pleasure right. being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Let me...